Okay, if you're watching this, you're probably a watch enthusiast or collector who loves watches and probably likes to buy and sell watches from time to time. And in this video, I'm going to share some of my pro tips for when selling a watch yourself, some do's and don'ts. It's a bit of a long one, so grab yourself a cup of tea and get yourself comfy because there's quite a few points to cover, so let's talk about them. So I want to share some tips to help you sell your watch efficiently and help maximize your potential profits while also selling it as fast as possible. So a watch will sell well when the crossover between the price of the watch and the interest around the watch is balanced when it's right. Or put differently, if a watch is priced too high, it's unlikely to sell unless the interest is very high. And conversely, if the watch isn't that interesting, the price will need to be low in order for it to sell. So you need to get the balance right and having good awareness of what's going on in the market is quite important here. So the first step is to collate everything you have on the watch together and you'll need all the parts and bits and bobs later for the price assessment, the description, the header write-up and also for the photographs. So here we're talking about the watch, the box, the papers and cards the other bits and bobs, the hang tags, the booklets, everything that came with the watch in its original purchase, and the more the better. I do meet lots of people who are selling a watch only, and when I ask about the box and papers, they either lost it or threw it away. Wait, what? If you have it, include it in the sale. And if you have watch only, well, it is what it is, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, next, find out what your watch's model, serial number, and other important ID numbers. The most basic information you'll need for selling your watch is the make and model. For example, Rolex Submariner, Amiga Speedmaster, Patek Philippe Calatrava, Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, Cartier Santos, Breitling Navitimer, and so on and so on. But there are also some other important identification numbers that you need to be aware of too. And the most important is the watch's model or sometimes called a reference number. Yes, you may be selling a Rolex Submariner, but there've been dozens of different iterations and editions produced over the last several decades. So it's vital to know what your watch's specific model reference number is to help pinpoint the exact model. And potential buyers will need to know this as well to narrow down the watch's production years, the movement used in the watch, the size of the watch, and all the other important watch information. Another useful number to know is the watch's serial number, which is unique to the watch itself. And this can be found on the paperwork or the card of the watch, and also on the watch itself somewhere. You may need to do an online search to find out exactly where the serial number is on your watch. Now, if you have the papers or the card with the watch, then the date of the watch should be on there, but the serial number can help you estimate when the watch was produced by cross-referencing it with production serialized codes and charts are available online. And some brands offer official databases while other databases are compiled by enthusiasts. Next, you need to establish how much your watch is worth and researching your specific watch can help you figure out what you can expect to sell your watch for and what the current going rate is. You should be able to find sales listings of similar watch models online on eBay and Chrono24 and they can give you a rough estimate of your watch's current market value. However, do remember that no two pre-owned luxury watches are identical in terms of the condition, the service history, um, the contents and the provenance and all of these factors can impact impact on the final sale price of the watch. And also the listed prices are gonna be higher than what ultimately you'll get paid for your watch. Because just because someone's asking for 10,000 pounds for their watch, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is what they're going to get. Far from it, in fact. Because there are deductions such as platform fees and shipping costs to take into consideration. So even if you see a similar used Rolex Submariner selling for 10,000 pounds, for example, it's highly unlikely that you will pocket the full 10,000 pounds for selling yours. And an important tip here is don't fall victim to the endowment effect. And this is a phenomenon where people place more value on things merely because they own them. Your watch is ultimately worth what someone is willing to pay for it, regardless of how special it is to you. Next up, you need to understand how condition, repairs and aftermarket components can impact on the watch's sales price. Aside from the specific brand and the model of your watch, the other main factors that will determine the value of your watch is its condition. Is the watch in good working order? Is it in nice condition? Does it have any visible damage to the case or the bracelet? Um, 
Are there scratches on the crystal or the bezel? Is the leather band torn and tatty? Uh, or has the metal bracelet stretched? Has it got band stretch and is it scratched? Is the movement still winding and running according to the watch's spec and all the complications working, the, the date, the GMT hand, the chronograph, the moon phase, the perpetual calendar? Is it waterproof to the original manufacturer spec? And do you know this for sure? Has it been pressure tested recently? And these are all important considerations to understand before selling your watch. And on this point, I strongly recommend to always be honest about the condition of your watch to any potential buyers. It's no use to try and hide any imperfections because they will eventually be seen. And the last thing you want is an unhappy buyer. You want to manage their expectations professionally. If there are scuffs and scrapes and dings and dents on the watch, show them. And if the watch isn't suitable to a buyer because of its condition, then it is what it is. But if you try to hide it, the buyer will be annoyed and may want to send the watch back and ask for a refund, which is an absolute pain in the ass and it adds work for everyone. This is a result you want to avoid. Extra admin, extra cost, extra lost time, and more than anything, annoyance and frustration from the buyer and for everyone. And this is all massively intensified if you're sending your watch overseas as well, so be sure to avoid that. And if selling through a platform like eBay or Chrono24, this will get in the way of you getting paid. Worst case, if you think a potential buyer is interested but grumbling over the condition, you could offer the potential buyer to have the watch polished at their expense or at your own. Okay, next up, review competing watches. Here you want to explore the market and see what watches you're competing against. Look at like for like watches that are in your country and similar year and see what the lowest price is and what the highest price is. And ideally your watch would be pitched somewhere towards the lower end of the pricing scale. After all, why would someone buy a watch that's a higher price when it's available like for like at a cheaper price? Now, another tip for you, price the watch expecting to get knocked down a little bit. After all, buyers love getting a deal. It's human nature. Sometimes if you're really lucky, people will just buy the watch like boom, sold, no questions and God bless these types of buyers. But most of the time people will negotiate and hustle a little bit, so be prepared for that. And sometimes people will even massively lowball you, but do expect to offer a little goodwill discount. Next tip, manage your own selling expectations. What's more important to you, selling your watch fast or making more money? Often you can't have it both ways. And in most scenarios, you'll need to choose one over the other. If you want to sell your watch fast, you need to make sure your watch is very competitively priced if there are other competing watches. And if you want to max up on your potential earnings, be patient and be prepared to wait a little longer. Now, if you're getting any value from this video, please hit the like button so I know I'm doing okay. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on other future videos on making money with watches and saving money, staying safe, and lots of other helpful and educational content. Thank you. Okay, next on my list is to clean the watch thoroughly before photographing. Because when selling a watch, presentation, it really does count for a lot. So make the watch look nice and clean and presentable and wrist ready. Give it a good clean because a nice clean looking watch that is shiny and sparkly and looking wrist ready is likely to sell better than a competing watch that's grimy and grubby and dirty. So for stainless steel and precious metal watches that are water resistant, clean them using warm water with a, a drop of washing up liquid and a soft toothbrush and then wipe it down with a soft jewelry microfiber cloth and get in touch with me for more information on how to clean your other watches or just do a quick youtube search there's plenty of good information out there here on youtube about how to clean your watch okay next be sure to take clear and detailed pictures because as i said earlier presentation is everything so be sure to take clear and detailed pictures of your watch. Having nice pictures will make people want to check out your watch and potentially list it higher in a sea of competing other watches. Buyers want to see as many details as possible to determine the authenticity and the condition um, of the watch before actually purchasing it. And you will need to make sure you take pictures of all angles of the watch, the front, uh, the back, the sides, the lugs, the winding crown, the bracelet, the buckle, the clasp, 
the outside and the underside of the watch. If there are any numbers engraved on the watch, take pictures of that too, but make sure to blur out the serial numbers of your watch for security reasons. Also take pictures of all the packaging and the documents and the extras all together in one photo so the buyer can see exactly what's included. Again, concealing the serial number just for security reasons. Make sure the pictures are well lit, that they're clear and high resolution. You want your watch to look good in the photographs to help entice potential buyers. I recommend watching a few YouTube videos on product photography and get more tips here. And you don't need an expensive camera. A good modern smartphone will do, but try to think creatively about how you take your pictures. Okay, next up, try to make your watch look cool in the pictures. Use good photography hacks, lifestyle settings, and good lighting is everything. And like I said, watch a few YouTube tutorials on how to take good product photos. Like I said, having good attractive pictures will help encourage people to click on your listing. And I personally like to include shots of the watch in the hand or on the wrist uh, and maybe a pocket shot. Now Instagram is full of cool inspirational photos and ideas and you don't need to be a content creator or a pro photographer or anything like that. Just potentially borrow some inspiration from Instagram and just try your best to replicate it. I'll leave a link in the comments below to some of my favorite videos to hopefully give you some good ideas. Okay, the next part, write a short, concise title description. This is the short line of text that will appear as the headline sale of your watch. And this should include the short form details of your watch. You need to mention the brand, the model, the reference, the year and any extras and maybe the size of the watch. And, and also perhaps one bonus point about the watch, perhaps something like excellent condition or just serviced or rare and collectible model or something. But short, sharp information, but enough to make the potential buyer want to click the watch and read more. Uh, for example, Rolex, Submariner, date, reference, 122610LN, 2021, 41 millimeter, with box and papers, mint condition. Okay, next write a useful and salesy write-up and tell a bit of a story about the watch. Whilst you're hopefully selling a watch that someone else will want and is in demand, it won't harm to remind people about what's cool about your watch. And this is where you can expand the write-up a little bit. You may need to motivate people a little and inspire them to make the purchase of your watch. And here you can write about any interesting facts that may persuade someone to hit that buy button. What is it about the watch that should make them buy it? Why should they buy it? What is it about the watch that makes it great? What is there to love about the watch? And there is a saying I love, and that is, the more you tell, the more you sell. And do feel free to get a little personal here. Tell people why you personally love the watch. What compelled you to buy it in the first place? What physical features do you like? And was there a fascinating story behind the watch and why you bought it? Try to get the story of your watch to resonate with the potential buyer through its story. It will help increase the watch's significance as the story may resonate with the potential buyer. And personally, I like to see why someone is selling their watch. I like to know this. Because if you feel like someone's selling a watch because it's a NAF watch, that of course will not compel someone else to want to buy it. Conversely, if you mention that despite you absolutely loving the watch and you'll miss it terribly, you're selling it because you need the money or you're thinning your collection down or perhaps you're saving for a grail watch and this watch sale will contribute towards that move. Or maybe you've just moved house or had a baby and need the cash. This adds a little bit of a personal touch to the listing. But in this part though, still keep things short and concise. No waffle and hot air. Try to break your write up into bullet point style fashion of writing because it makes things flow better and makes it easier for the potential buyer to read. And I did make a dedicated video on this subject. Have a watch at the end. Okay, next up to service or not to service. Consider servicing the watch before selling it. If you're selling to an end buyer, most people like the peace of mind of knowing that a watch has just been serviced. So spending a few hundred pounds in advance is a small investment into your watch because that few hundred pounds of servicing cost may return several hundred pounds of increased selling price, maybe even more. And this has to be judged on a case by case basis because it can be expensive to service higher end luxury watches, particularly vintage watches or watches with complications. So 
bear that in mind too. And it can be hard to determine if you'll get that money back when selling your watch. And it's also true that some buyers, normally hardcore collectors, prefer that you don't service your watch first so they can have it serviced themselves. Perhaps compare the value um, of the price difference between the cost of repairs and see if it's worth sending the watch in for service before selling it. Okay, next up, be aware of the price difference between a naked watch and a fully packaged watch. And typically there are three levels here. You've got the watch only, you've got the watch with box and papers, and then you've got the full set, which is the watch with its box and its papers and all the extras and accessories, uh, the hang tags, the booklets, the inner and outer box, and ideally even the original purchase receipt. Buyers love full sets. And a naked watch, which is a watch sold in its own, is not as appealing to buyers as a watch that's a full set or comes with its box and papers. And you may be surprised at the price difference between a, a naked watch and a, and a full set. And bear in mind that the older and more collectible the watch, the more value is placed on the full set. Now you are able to buy boxes and accessories online, but make sure you know what you're doing here and be careful not to get crappy fakes or incorrect boxes. If you're sourcing parts separately, I'd advise it's best to disclose this in your listing just to cover yourself. Now, if you're selling just a watch, you may need to work a little bit harder to make the watch look more interesting in your photos, perhaps with nicer style shots or um, little photo sets. And I'll leave a link below for this because um, there's some great videos online and try and have some fun here. Okay, next up, be mindful of tatty leather. Be aware of the condition of your leather strap. No one will really want to buy a watch with tatty, stinky, dirty, worn leather straps. So you can consider replacing the leather strap or buying a suitable replacement strap to make the watch look more desirable and appealing to the end buyer. Even if it's a non-branded strap and not an OEM one, it will enhance the look of the watch. Just be sure to mention in your listings that it's an aftermarket strap and not a genuine brand one. But whatever you do, do not buy a copy or a fake strap. It's absolutely not worth it, despite the temptation of their cheaper price. Either buy a nice quality leather strap and mention in the listing um, or source a genuine brand one. But be warned, a genuine brand one can set you back quite a bit. Personally, I like David the Strap Tailor. Pay him a visit and tell him I said hi. Okay, next up, where should you sell your watch online? Now, I will be doing a separate video on this one because it's quite a big subject, but right now, I'm really liking what eBay are doing at the moment. Their authenticity guarantee is really cool. It's a world-class feature that's out to protect both buyers and sellers. And this part of their service doesn't cost the buyer or the seller uh, a penny, it's a free service. Their selling features are excellent and they are really working hard to position themselves as the go-to place to buy and sell luxury watches with good protection, good features and good pricing. And then of course, Chrono24 is another obvious place to sell watches online. And you can try social media, watch events, forums, online groups, or down the pub. I did make a video about keeping safe while buying and selling watches privately, and I'll link to this at the end. Okay, let's quickly discuss offline options to selling your watch. Going to bricks and mortar places were traditionally the only option people had to sell their watches in the past. And these included places like pawn shops, vintage consignment stores, jewelers, and, and auction houses. Today, you can still take your watches to companies like this, but they may not give you the best deal for your watch, to be honest. But uh, a little word of caution, it's not uncommon to get an inflated price over the phone, only to get a much lower offer when you show up with the watch in hand. Another offline option is to sell a directly to a private buyer in person, but this will normally have an online conduit in the middle somewhere. And this has its own set of challenges, including safety and trust with minimal personal protection should the transaction go pear-shaped. Okay, a quick bit of knowledge for you. Before deciding on where to sell your watch, figure out if selling, consigning, auctioning, or trading in is the better option for you. Some watch companies offer just one of these methods, while others will offer all of them. Selling your watch outright will probably get you paid the fastest, but the payout is probably the lowest. Consigning a watch is where the watch company will list it for you and take a small commission once it sells. You'll normally get more return, but the process will take a bit longer. And again, I made a dedicated video on this, which I'll leave a link to down in the description. You can also auction your watch, but it can be risky as there's no way to determine the final sales price, plus there's quite high commissions to pay too. Trading in your watch will normally get you a reasonable price for it, but there's no money on the table here, just credit towards other time pieces that you may want to purchase. 
Okay, next up on my list is to beware of hidden fees. Before deciding on how and where you want to sell your watch, be aware of any fees, commissions, and additional surcharges. And don't forget you're responsible for the end shipping and insurance costs, unless of course the watch is collected from you in person. And check to see if there are any applicable taxes or customs and duties too. These costs will all have a direct impact on your final take home amount. So it's important to find out what they are and make fair comparisons. Okay, next up, shipping your watch. Because selling the watch is one challenge and getting it delivered is the next challenge. And this is a big subject, so I did a dedicated video on shipping watches and I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's a long one, but it's a critical part of the journey in selling watches yourself. But flying through the main points, there are, is it a domestic buyer from a person in your country and so a domestic delivery? Or is it an overseas international buyer with an international shipping? Domestic deliveries is quite straightforward, UK to UK for example, but international shipping can be quite tricky. There's a lot that you need to get right, so do watch my video on this. Package up your watch securely, make sure you use more protection than you actually feel is necessary, and do take pictures and even videos of your watch before sending it out for evidence. And don't cut corners on your shipping options here. Use the premium express option. The extra cost is worth it, so don't go economy. Go express or priority if you can. And always select the tracking and the sign for feature. Use a reputable courier. Your local postal service will have an option scale to choose from and choose the best possible one. We have Royal Mail here in the UK, the US have USPS. I personally always use a courier and I like DHL, but others may prefer FedEx or UPS for example. And find out what insurance amount they will cover up to and then take a backup insurance with secure assess for extra peace of mind. Trust me, this is really worth it. Okay, next up and finally, think about return policies. Once the watch has been shipped and the buyer sees it in the metal, what if they're not happy with it? Maybe the condition, the size, the weight, the fit. What's your return policy? Do you accept returns or not? And who is responsible for paying for the return shipping and insurance to get your watch back to you? So learn about where you stand here. Some middlemen marketplace platforms will enforce their way of working upon you. But do some further reading to see where you stand in this respect. And if your potential buyer is coming across a little tricky, try to narrow down the risk of a return. Ask them what might make you not happy when you get the watch and see what they say. If the condition is important, send them more pictures and have a video call where you can actually showcase the video on a call. If it's size or fit or feel or weight, if that might be an issue, then perhaps tell them to go to their local jewelers and try one on before they buy it from you because ideally you want to avoid returns as it can make matters complicated. So work diligently and professionally to try and prevent it. And that's your lot. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I hope you got some value from this and I hope you found it helpful. Remember to please let me know if I did okay by hitting the like button. Do you have any tips that you can add? Please leave them in the comments as always. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to check out my website for watches I have for sale. Download the free guide that's there. Please get in touch if you have any luxury watches for sale. And if you need any help, just get in touch. Cheers and see you on the next one.